Welcome to the T2 Hubcast with me, Spencer Locker. And me, Benice Cassidy. I remember there was a friend of mine, Carl Griffiths. He's a very good friend of mine. I've known him for, well, it feels like forever. Um, yeah. Little, uh, I say a little lad. He's not a little lad, but he's he's a lad in uh, South Wales. I just remember I, I worked with him extensively uh, in my time in the military. Great guy. Um, a very calming influence for me, uh, even though he was a bit wild. Uh, <laughs> but one of the, th- I remember one of the things that he said to me not that long ago, really, was um, just because you can, it doesn't mean you should. I, I, which I think was, I mean, I, it wasn't necessarily aimed at me, but... But I, th- I just think it was a little bit of a, um, a, a a molten golden droplet of wisdom that I just, just stuck in my head. And it reminded me of um, a time when, back in my youth, I suppose, was it my youth? Maybe 20s, whatever. Have you ever heard of something called the European Court of Human Rights? No, tell me more about it. <laughs> okay, so when we were, I, I won't go too deep into it, but basically uh, when we were in Europe, yeah. um, there was a thing called the European Court of Human Rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it did some amazing work. For, for equality yeah. um, and, and bringing diversity the, to the fore. And it was a, an incredible organisation. I used to joke that you can't have the European Court of Human Rights without the European Court of Human Responsibilities. But people are painfully unaware of the responsibilities that go with those rights. Yes. Because that gives us a balance, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. So when we start going back to Carl Griffiths, just because he can, it doesn't mean you should. Yeah. Um, when we start thinking about um, the, the Euro- rights some responsibilities yes we've got rights and 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 you know what some people have worked very hard uh, and they've suffered to be able to gain those rights but nonetheless there are responsibilities that go along with that yeah so we're looking at a point of balance um and i look on this as a fulcrum point yeah yeah but it's i think it's very very easy for us to look at this as a generic piece and go right so my fulcrum needs to be in the middle so when we look at our lives our professional lives our personal lives whatever we are prioritizing sometimes we think that because that fulcrum point needs to be in the middle um if, if it is in the middle but one side is weighted more than the other it, you're not going to get that balance yeah so sometimes we need to move that fulcrum point um which is which is a great concept to have but what does that look like to you as an individual mm-hmm. because it needs to be specific to you it can't be generic yeah. because you've got your own life you've got your own responsibility whether it's personal whether it's professional um you've got these other things that's going or, or lots of different things nobody's got the same exactly the same life yeah so we need to identify what what that fulcrum point looks to each of us mm. to be able to gain that balance that we need what are your thoughts on that i suppose my first question would be how do people find that middle point that starting ground what does that look like and how to find it because would it be right in saying that not everyone really understands or knows what that looks like for them maybe so yeah maybe so but but the thing is um in with that in mind i think that there is enough things out there if you're paying attention to be able to to be able to um identify what that fulcrum point looks like mm. but i think the initial point is honesty and happiness okay are you happy because mm. you if you, you know, i did you know that tiktok that i put out oh, oh i didn't put it out but um <laughs> but that t2 put that tiktok out about me loving my job yes and then there was so much comeback sort of saying well must be a bloody brilliant job because I hate my job <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and it's not unusual I mean all the way through my professional life I'm sure you've been exactly the same position mm. you meet people who are hard work yeah and, and they're hard work not because they, they want to be hard work but because they're in a position that they're not happy in yeah. whether it's a job yeah. whether it's a family a, a, a situation outside work or, or whether it's a mixture of the two or, yeah. or and, and again when we start talking about being hard work that's got depths so it's not a binary choice you're either great or you're, you're, you're annoyed Mm. yeah there's, there's, so so again when we start talking about that fulcrum point we might look at our own lives and go how are you doing be honest don't just go i'm fine I'm how are fine. you everything's yeah. great but just be be honest a little bit and go <clears throat> well you know what i'm a little bit a little bit mm, off 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 kilter i'm a bit off well that might mean your fulcrum point is just a, a, away from where just a little bit away where you need to be yeah. or where, where, where you would like it to be so let's say for the sake of argument you could be talking to somebody and they say you say how, how, how are you doing today what, what, what how how you been? I haven't seen you for ages. I'm a bit fatigued, to be honest with you. Mm. I'm a bit tired, you know. Things are getting a little bit... Mm, I'm ready for a holiday. Okay, so that holiday is probably serving a purpose of bringing that fulcrum back into the that that uh, the, 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 that pivot point, yeah. back into where it needs to be. Because at the moment, it's a little bit too far away. That's mm-hmm. why you're feeling fatigued. You may have been working too hard. You may have been partying too hard. Because it's not all work, is it's it? It's not all work. <laughs> it's not all work. Um, so so this, the, this is where we find that fulcrum point. 
point is it's identifying that you know what I'm not great or I'm not the best I could be I think a lot of time as well a lot of people they sometimes don't really take the opportunity to evaluate things um, so often in life life's really fast paced like it's, it's busy and we're, we're moving and jumping from one thing to the next and how often do people really sit down and have a think about how they're showing up or how they're feeling or, or kind of what's going on in their mind and the impact it's having on mental well-being and physical well-being as well and that's something that's really important because we do just move around from one thing to the next um I think as well yeah it's people need to sometimes really sit and think about well, what does that balance look like for me and where do I get my fulfillment uh, where do I get my enjoyment and happiness I mean you're speaking to someone with a print unconscious motivator to enjoy life and be happy so it's something I can definitely connect with and it's something that I can think about over over the years as well where I haven't found the balance and there's been so many occasions where I haven't felt like like I'm getting that and happiness and that has an impact to how I show up and how I behave and mm-hmm. a lot of people probably saw I say probably did see a lot of what we refer to as like shadow behavior mm. that's me not in my best self I'm not productive probably not in, nice to be around at times and the reason for that was because I didn't have that balance right I was putting my focus and my energy in in one area but I was not sabotaging but dismissing or not putting enough focus in in another area and I wasn't I was probably thinking of that that seesaw I was tipping right over there yeah. and it's really important to stop and pause sometimes and address what's going on and why don't people do that I think sometimes it's people do that because it's the expectation of that that's what they have to do so for some people it might be that sometimes work takes over their personal life why are they doing that is that because they it's how they're wired they're, they're driven to um to kind of go after goals and to do really well in their career and get to a certain point maybe they do it because they feel as though they need to provide for their family and they need to um, have a really great salary. Um, but then it's a case of, well, what is, how does that balance itself out? Because you can do that and you can go off. And we've, we've seen it happen with some of the people that we work with. They um, dedicate so much of their lives to their career. Sometimes outside of work, it, they're, they're showing up as a completely different person because they, they get home and it's almost like kind of um, this whole energy just shifts because mm. they can just release mm. um, because all of that stress than how busy they've been and it's a case of then the people that they love dearly the most and the people that spend the, the most time around them the people they trust the most see probably the worst side of them because they haven't got that balance and they really struggle to say no to things work is busy for for everyone and I think as well there's been so many changes every single business no matter how big or small every single organization has been impacted significantly and had significant amount of changes over the last three plus years um and I think that's had a big impact on employers and employees as well um and I think yeah some people it is a case of they just get crack on let's just do it let's get the job done because that's what we're expected to do or that's what I expect I put that expectation on myself but the reality is can you continue doing that for a prolonged period of time mm, yeah really good points there's a lot there's there's lo- as you were sort of speaking there there was there was cans of worms being opened everywhere uh, that, that, ping, ping, ping. Ping. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that's no. It's, it's, I think you make some really valid points there, and I think that can, can I can I ask for, for yourself? Yes. You said you said there was a period of time where where you were didn't have that balance. Yes. How did you manage to get past that? Um, sometimes it can be making quite a, a big decision. Hmm. Um, so um, I mean, earlier on in my career, so um, I when I first started off in learning and development, I was up and down the UK all the time, and I just did it. I was very career driven um, in my um, early twenties, and um, it was very much of a case of I'm going to do this because that's uh, that's what I'm going to do and that's where I want to be and if I do this now it's going to get me X mm. um, and so I did that but the the reality is that I didn't put myself first I, I gained a lot of weight I was really unhealthy I um, on a weekend I would come back home on a weekend and I would just slob about and do nothing because I was absolutely exhausted yeah, yeah. Um, and it wasn't until there was the potential um, opportunity to change our roles and I ended up changing my role so that I wasn't traveling all the time and I knew I probably wasn't getting going to get in much as much enjoyment out of mm. traveling up and down the UK and going here there and mm. everywhere running and delivering training sessions every day but I knew it was the right thing to do and actually mm. although I initially thought I'm not going to enjoy this I really enjoyed that job right um but then there's been other um, occasions as well when I've had that and it has been a case of having to really sit hard and think and address right okay what's what's going on in my life right 
now. Mm. And again, this is probably accelerated because for me, I'm very driven to enjoy life, be happy. Yeah. Um, but I've had occasions where I've really had to sit down and evaluate what's going on, on in my life right now. Is that mm. making me happy? Um, what do I need to do about it mm. if it's not? Yeah, that's a really good point. Really good point. I think one of the things that um, we, we, we do tend to find um, with people who make these decisions successfully. Mm. And again, when we start saying, when we start talking about making this decision, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be a binary thing. However, sometimes we've got to be disciplined, haven't we? Yes. We've got we've got to sort of say, right, okay, then. So this thing over here that I like mm. isn't necessarily serving me well. Yeah. This thing over here that I want to like, I need to be able to do that. Yeah. I, I need to be disciplined enough to not do that and do this over here. Yeah. Um, but again, when we start talking about discipline, um, you can be talking about um, some people who are extremely disciplined. Mm. Very it, it not. I'm not saying it comes easy to them, but it's their their mindset. It's the way they live their lives that have got that extreme discipline. Whereas we've got other people in other areas who might not be quite as disciplined. Yes. And it's just a case of well, okay, uh, you know what? I'll have that bit of cake today. I'll, I'll kick off tomorrow. Yeah. I'll start the fitness regime tomorrow <laughs> or whatever. Um, but and, and but that that has the capacity. And I'm being a bit sort of sort of flippant there. But it's this discipline of right. What do I want to achieve, and how do I want to achieve it? Yeah. So now we're going into challenge state mindset. Yeah. We're starting to talk about um, recognizing what's important to you, mm. uh, looking at evaluating your life. Yeah. Um, because I, I, when I say evaluating your life, I'm not necessarily talking about life changing things. No, but, but just having a little there may, there may be sort of little things that you go right. Okay, so this thing isn't serving me well, and because I'm doing this, this isn't working well. Mm. So how am I going to be able to gain control over this? Well, I need to do less of this. Yeah. So um, then we can even flick back to uh, Michael Bungie Stania there. If I'm saying yes to this, what am I saying no to? Mm. Because there's only so much water in the fountain, isn't there? Yeah. There's only so much hour, so many hours in the day. So um, you can't say yes to everything mm. um, because you're just going to be maxed out, yes. whether that's personal or professional. Yeah. So we've got to understand that this thing that's important to us that we do want, if I'm saying yes to this, then I've got to let something slip somewhere else. Mm. And whatever that may mean, you've, you've got to make that decision decision haven't you you've got to have that discipline to be able to do that your wants and your needs uh, your requirements were probably different maybe slightly different maybe totally different yeah we've got to keep on top of this keeping in touch with ourselves what is it that i want to do have i achieved this fulcrum have i got the balance that i want and if not it's my responsibility to do something about it because mm. because again when you sort of say with, with the expectations my job my career well i have to do this to do this i have to i this expected of me to do and and, and well, that's 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 all well and good but when we start talking about the expectations, when we start talking about people who are giving you opportunities, you can't control that. Mm. And you could, I suppose you could influence it to a certain degree, but that's not in your control. So what you've got to do is rather than feeling overwhelmed and that fulcrum point being too far one way or the other, and now you're in a shadow self because, yeah. you know what, I, I, I've sacrificed all this to get a better position, possibly to get a better salary so that my family can have a better life work, a, a better life work balance. But to achieve that life work balance, I've got to achieve an imbalance. Yes. I've got to sacrifice this family time, maybe, to be able to achieve this thing, which is going to give me more family time, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I suppose one of the things that we've got there is focusing on the controllables and not the non controllables. <laughs> One of the uh, people that uh, we've worked with, um, they wanted uh, uh, they want to climb the corporate ladder. Um, mm. Don't get me wrong, it, it, it's not a, a cold thing, but they love the job. Yeah. But, but they were getting a little bit, not necessarily bored, but they needed more challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, they needed uh, taking outside the comfort zone, so they were given more challenge. And very quickly came to the conclusion that it wasn't within their capacity to be able to deal with it. Yes. Um, so their chance, their choices initially were, well, I'll go back down. Yeah. I'll go back down the level and I'll get back and... and that's I suppose that's a failure, but but you can also think to yourself, well, is it tactical? Yeah. Um, is it's it? Doing is it the well, right uh, thing. Do, what, what, yeah. Uh, um, I, I, again, I'm I'm getting stressed out because I can't do my job. Yeah. Um, but then they started thinking, right? Well, what's in my control? Well, what I can do is I can I can ask for a bit of coaching. I can I can I can gain a mentor. I can do a little bit of studying. I can read up on it rather mm. than just accept that that this, this is too much for me. Well, educate yourself. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I say educate yourself, I'm not saying that is always the answer, but you 
you can look at the problem and go right okay so what is in what is in my control yeah. to be able to enable me to be able to deal with this thing yeah um and it might be you know what i've got to ask questions it might be that i've got to um, i've got to admit that maybe it's challenging for me not impossible but it's challenging for me so i might have to go to somebody else and go can you help me out here yeah again that's going to need a lot of psychological safety but it might be a case of where i'm going to put myself through a college course or maybe go back to your boss and say look i've identified a thing that i can do that's going to make me better at this job yes is there any chance that we might have a contribution thing they might have something going on they might have uh, um well you know what we've got a course like that and we can put you on and, and there's so many options but it's recognizing it and taking responsibility making yourself accountable I yes suppose. definitely yeah. accountability is huge in every kind of aspect of life it's yeah it might be that you've got kind of um this is this is what i'm i'm gonna do so i'm gonna climb the corporate ladder and i'm gonna kind of get this particular role but if that challenge is a bit too much or maybe you've got some kind of gaps as well or you realize and have that moment when you think oh my goodness actually i need to like pull my socks up and i've got oh, quite a bit of work to do here mm. in order to make this successful then you need to really sit and think about right okay so what can i control in this situation how am i going to make it happen mm. because so often as well links back to what you were saying earlier spence um people almost have like their these kind of i am have the right to this promotion like i've been worked for this business for however many years and I've been here longer than that person. I mm. It's expected that I have it. I'm entitled to it. And it's a case of, well, is, is that true? Let's mm-hmm. let's have a little think about that. But then also as well, it's right, right okay, so if you do the, get that opportunity, well, how are you going to make yourself accountable to actually achieving and doing whatever that job is and getting results? Yeah, I find that my mental, emotional well-being suffers more when I lean more into my expectations than my gratitude. Right. So if I have a certain expectations, hey, don't get me wrong, I ain't, the, I, ain't the, I ain't the end article. I was listening to that podcast. Remember that podcast I I recommended to you the other day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we were talking about um, we, uh, one of the analogies they were talking about was, are you the finished article? Because mm. the, the 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 race in in the um, in in professional circles is, I want to get as the best I can be. I want to get I want to get to be the finished article. When actually we're all masterpieces, but we're all unfinished masterpieces. Yeah. And every time we go through every little bit of life is just another dab of colour. Yes. And and when we finish that, when that masterpiece is finished, is usually our last day on earth. It is. Um, yeah. So, so it's, don't race towards that finishing the masterpiece. It's it's all it's the journey rather than the destination. Yes, and um, I think as well, so many people get consumed by that that they forget and to take a moment to sit and really appreciate what's going on right now. Hmm. Um, because yeah, people just they're so forward focused that they sometimes miss the present. Yeah, yeah. And just to just to sort of paraphrase what you said earlier on, one of the things that you said was life life moves pretty fast. Have you ever seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off? No. <laughs> right, so in, on Fer- in the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off, when he's doing a monologue to camera, he turns around and he says, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, oh, you'll yes. miss it. Yeah, it's true. So yeah, yeah, there's there's that, that dab in the pedal, dab in the brake pedal. Mm. But again, we've also got to understand that for, for us that works, but there's some people out there who are going, no, no, we've <laughs> got to go to that, we've got to get that flag on the hill. and Because yeah. and, and, that's their unconscious motivator. Yes. And you know what? I fully appreciate that. Don't get me wrong, I do believe that dabbing the brake pedal works for everybody but how long you stand on the brake pedal for is going to be ve- is going to be varying yeah because mm-hmm. again when we start thinking about this and we start thinking about this fulcrum point you might think that your life is you've, you've achieved that fulcrum point and you've got the balance that you require but you might get put on a project or you might get put on a on a on an account or you're given a job and the fact that this is new yes or it might not be new yeah. but it might have people included in it that are challenging for you or mm-hmm. aspects of it that you might not feel comfortable so in that particular moment that fulcrum is going to move yes yeah and there's some people who love to be challenged and that fulcrum might move a little bit mm. yeah okay I like this it's a bit of a challenge Come I feel on, uncomfortable <laughs> but you know what I'm relishing it I'm stepping into it I'm leaning into it I'm doing what I've got to do but there are other people with that little change actually because it's a small change and they're like they 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 like routine and structure and things yeah. like that well that fulcrum point could be quite a significant move so for them in that in the, in the um 
the the weeks, days, weeks, and months after that fulcrum point has moved, they are struggling to get that fulcrum point back to where they need to be. So it's different for everybody, and and I think that that's one of the things that we're we're sort of trying to trying to get to really is the fact that taking accountability and taking responsibility um, depends on your honesty with yourself. It does, and uh, you've got to be honest, and you've got to sort of recognise things, and you've got to sort of go right. This is what it looks like to me. Um, yes, it's that, because it looks like that to me. I can be accountable, take responsibility. I can make changes. I can take control, and I can exert that control, so I can try and get it in. But if you don't take that responsibility, if you don't make make yourself accountable, that's when you're going to shadow, and it's like, oh, life's happening to me, yeah, rather than me being part of life. It's victim and, mindset. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, and that that entitlement can really sort of drive it in. I should be here. I would be. I would be head of department if it weren't for them over there. Yeah. I would. But I would. Well, actually, okay. So what you're doing is you're giving control to that person over there. Yeah. They're controlling your life. They're controlling your destiny. Mm. So I was about you taking control. I was about you moving that pivot, finding that fulcrum and going, right, so what can I do to actually achieve what I want to achieve uh, and get that balance? And and again, the balance might be, you know what? I'm massively into my career. Uh, so that's very, very important to me. Not a problem. Yeah. But there's some people. Yeah, if it if that's if that if you are absolutely honest with yourself and that is what you want to do, that's great. I've got no problem with that whatsoever because we're all different. We've all got yes. different viewpoints. We've all got different unconscious motivators. We've all got a different sense of purpose. Um, but as long as you're honest with yourself and you've got the clarity of going, right, actually, this is what I want. Maybe it's stressful. Maybe it's it's loading you down. Okay, so what can I control to move that pivot so that I get that, that, that balance? So it might be development, self-development. It might be education. It might be coaching and mentoring. It might, what, whatever. But for some people, it's like, well, I'm actually doing this and it's weighing me down. But the reason I'm doing this is to give me a better life work balance. Yeah. But are you getting a really getting a little bit of life worth? And work when balance? you when are you gonna get that as yeah, well? Because yeah. so, sometimes you can just you you're in that mindset that I'm, I'm doing this now and I'm going through the hard times now, so that at this particular point it, it'll all pay off. It's all gonna be it's all gonna be great. It's all gonna be worth it. When does that happen? And actually, how much? And is it gonna be worth it after hmm. spending for some people years of hmm. exhaustion, fatigue, misery, hmm. upset, or what stress, anxiety, whatever it might be? Hmm. Is it really worth it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it might be yes. In which I, case, exactly. Yeah. Track on. I mean, I was talking. You, you do. You've done. You do a bit of walking, don't you? Hill walking yes. and, and all this and the other. So I was talking to a guy the other week, and he was talking about him being a false summiter. He loves the false summit. It drives him. It motivates him. He gets to that that summit where he thinks he's there. Yeah. And he's sort of thinking to himself. He's in the back of his mind. Well, when I achieve this, what's next? Yes. But actually, what that creates is another run. So you get to that summit, and it's like, oh, I've got another hill to climb here. Yeah. And it's a constant. Rather than looking for that peak, yes. looking for that, I've, I've, I've reached ultimate fulfilment, and and uh, he, that for him would be ultimately disappointing because it's all downhill from there on. Yeah. Whereas for him, he's a he's a serial um, false summiter. He loves it. He yeah. motivates me through, and I get it. I do. Not for me, but absolutely, I, yeah. I understand where it's coming from. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like it. Any more thoughts? Um, so I suppose if we're thinking about what we want people to try and get get from this podcast, mm. um, I suppose the first part is being honest with yourself Mm -hmm. what does that balance look like um i always think when it comes to taking accountability things the very first step is acknowledging reality (laughs) what is the reality right now um what 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 do i want out of things kind of what does kind of either end of that kind of um look like for me what is the middle how do i find that balance and i think it's really important to then start really thinking about actually what is it that is in or within my control am i spending my energy focusing on things Things that I can't control and that I can't influence in which case that's that's going to be tiring and mm. that's going to be frustrating but also as well that's when we start to kind of dip in regards to levels of accountability and it can consume mm. us so yeah what is it that we can influence what can we control um what's the situation right now and what is it that I want am I am I chasing for things am I focused way too far ahead that I'm actually maybe missing a few things that are happening in the present around me because again it's so easy to do that when mm. life's fast paced and it's energy Energetic, and uh, that's my <laughs> what I prefer to say rather than busy. Um, but yeah, and actually, kind of yeah, what is it that you can that you're going to be responsible for? What actually is it that you can do to take away in order to make that balance a little bit better for yourself? You can't just say, oh yeah, um, um, yeah, I, I really want to spend more time out and about. I really want to spend more time, kind of um, on my on my fitness and, and get healthy. But you might say that, but the reality is, are you actually taking any steps in order to? To, 
to find that balance because again so often we say oh yeah I I know that I spend too much time or too much energy on this and I know that I need to do focus on that area a little bit more but sometimes that's all it is we're just acknowledging it but we're not doing anything about it and that's really important because that's that's where we need to find a solution and actually commit to it own it and get it happen yeah I think that's that's that is a great statement to finish on <laughs> absolutely brilliant fully I fully concur there Bernice look we've had a great half an hour thank you very much for uh, your time thank you uh, great to have a chat as always yeah um, so that's the end of today I hope everybody's had a good day I hope you've enjoyed and take, uh, the podcast and taken something away so until next time from the T2 Hubcast bye bye now bye please consider leaving a five star review on your favourite podcasting platform it only takes a minute and your feedback is greatly appreciated reviews help other people find the show and learn about the amazing topics we cover additionally please turn on notifications so you never miss an episode and finally please subscribe or follow the T2 Hubcast if you haven't already doing this means that you'll automatically receive new episodes as soon as they're released thanks so much for your support